The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. As Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by waves, but he was asleep. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. The men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this, whom even the winds and the sea obey? My dear friends, the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Holy Gospel blot out our sins. Our, my dear friends, our readings today point us towards the idea of God has a rescuer. God who rescues us. Maybe you're familiar, it's in the Psalms quite a bit. Oh God, my, my rescuer and my deliverer. Maybe not quite as obvious, but during Holy Week on Palm Sunday... On Palm Sunday, we say that beautiful, we sing that beautiful response, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. In the Hebrew, that word Hosanna has connotations of God the rescuer, God who rescues us, God who saves us. And it's another aspect of the Christian life. Yesterday, I recommended to you reading Matthew chapter 5 and Matthew chapter 6 to get a sense, a summary of what it means to be Christian. This aspect of Jesus the rescuer, Jesus the deliverer. You can get that from Luke chapter 10. If you read Luke chapter 10 at home, you get that whole aspect of the Christian life. One of my favorite internet preachers right now uh, on YouTube, Father Mark Goring, I don't know if you've watched him or not, but he says, all Christians need to have a Ph.D., to be people of prayer, healing, and deliverance. That that's our Christian heritage. You'll see that in Luke chapter 10 if you look at that. That we are called by Christ to be people of prayer, people who pray for healing and deliverance. This healing and deliverance are closely related, if not the same thing. We're being rescued from something or delivered from something, from something or someone. And we're, being, we're asking God... For healing. And Jesus Christ is still healing today. He is still a healer. He is still someone who rescues us. He's the only one that can do it. What do we need healing from? If you think about the five dynamics of the human person, you can see we need either healing and deliverance in, in these areas of our life. Uh, in our intellect, one aspect of the human person. In our emotions, we can need healing or deliverance in our emotions. In our body, our physical body can be healed. In our spiritual side, our spiritual dynamic can need healing or deliverance or in our sexuality. These are places that Jesus wants to heal in us. These are things that we bring to him. Uh, The hard part is reflecting on ourself and naming what needs to be healed. But once we can name it, then we can bring that to Jesus for healing. If you look outside your own self for healing, you can see that we need, also need healing in our relationships with others, our personal relationships. We can see that healing is needed in our country, that healing is needed in our church, that healing is needed in the world. So healing outside of our own self as well is where we need to pray and ask for healing. And if you look at the mind, going back to my first example, those five aspects of the human person, if you look a little more closely at the mind, you can see there's other aspects within us that need healing. So in our mind, we also have a memory. Sometimes it's a healing of memories that we need. We have an imagination. 
Sometimes it can be a healing of our imagination as well. And of course, in our thoughts themselves, our thoughts can need to be healed. So to be people of Christ, following Christ, is to seek from him healing and deliverance and to ask that from each other, from the saints, from the angels, because he also gives us not only uh, each other, but our heavenly family and our angelic family to help us in this case. And as I stand here, I'm looking directly at an image of our Lord on the cross behind us here. And I'm thinking of that first reading where he asked to go to that small town, that small place, Zoar. Then we go to this small town so to find my safety. Well, that's a small place there on, on, on our Lord. It's a small place. It's a, the, the wound of the spear. But it opens into his heart into the heart of God. So we too need to seek the small place, seek the heart of Jesus.